Hey, what's up everybody? This is Jeff. Today we're going to make a video talking about the Kona side of the island, the West Hawaii side of the Big Island. So what you have on this side of the island is a very nice climate. It is almost always sunny. I mean, we're talking uh, 80 to 90 degrees pretty much year round. We have maybe stints very occasionally where it does rain a little bit but even on those rainy days it's not anything like Hilo um, so you won't get a day where you're just getting nothing but rain all day we don't get affected by hurricanes because we're on the other side of the mountains that block them so by the time the hurricane arrives it just has a really hard time of getting around there the hurricane would have to come from uh, the west and very, very rarely do you ever see uh, hurricanes coming from the west. So it'd have to <laughs> do something, and they have happened, but it, that would be how Kona would get hit by a hurricane, is if it came from the other way. If it's coming from uh, the Mexican Riviera, it's just not gonna um, happen that way. So another thing to keep in mind about the weather is Occasionally, we do get electrical storms, and those are scary. Very scary. I was here for an electrical storm, and at 8 o'clock in the morning, it sounded like it was World War III. That's how loud and powerful the lightning was. I mean, it was popping trees right here at the pool. It was just like, I didn't even know if it was going to hit the house. That's how frequent and how powerful the lightning was that happened one time so that's just something to keep in mind about the weather there is tsunami signs around here because it has been hit by tsunamis and it we're an island so if a tsunami does happen you know the island in the middle of the ocean would be affected the thing about Kona is from the coast it just starts going up a walleye volcano that leads me to the third point we are on the slopes of an active or a dormant volcano that was active over a hundred or about a hundred years ago the history channel made a documentary that said that if Hawala ever erupted it would take an hour for the lava to get down the mountain into the town just something to keep in mind about that is <laughs> have a backup plan right so in Kona it's good to not necessarily live on the coast because when big waves come or tsunamis you know your house could be affected you'll even go along a lee and you'll see where structures once were that are no longer you know they're just rubble now and they're they're not standing but there's plenty of places to live up the mountain up Maka it's all good it's all cool the last thing I'll say about weather is we do have VOG, volcanic smog. If you don't know what VOG is, V-O-G, look it up. It's, it's sulfuric acid that builds in the air and it creates a pollutant that is not necessarily healthy for your lungs. People say if Kona did not have VOG, Kona would be maybe the most beautiful place in all of Hawaii to live. But there is VOG and VOG is only here when the volcanoes are creating sulfuric acid. It doesn't always do that. In 2006, 2007, there was not a lot of VOG. People will say, oh, back in 2000, you know, whatever. I remember when there was no VOG. It wasn't always like this, but Howley Mau Mau is going, creating uh, sulfuric acid that goes west, and then when it gets over there, it finally pushes north. Unless there's Kona trade winds that pushes all the VOG out of town and pushes pushes it towards Hilo or Puna which it's doing right now for the last three days and people are in heaven they're loving it because it's no VOG clear skies you can see clearly now as they would say so VOG is an issue it you know you can it's in the air it's all around you it's like it's just there and some people get health effects asthma COPD stuff like that look it up if you're planning to move to Kona that's probably one of the negatives. The other thing would be traffic. Traffic is not ideal here. It's not built like for a big city. It's 
uh, stop and go traffic today on Ali'i Drive, and I haven't seen that for a long time. So Kona is starting to grow. A lot of you people who are watching this video are, are thinking about moving to Kona, and it is a growing town. It, it was really booming in the early 2000s, and then when the economic slowdown happened, Kona got hit really hard. Tourism and the housing boom. A lot of subdivisions just stopped, ceased. They didn't, you know, they just had no choice but to stop. But those days are now turning and we're going back towards growth in Kona. A construction guy that I talked to said that most of the growth is going to happen over by the airport. The airport is, well, a lot of you know the airport's north of Kailua, Kona. And there's the area of Palisades and Coloco, Hanukkahau over there. That area is getting ready to grow. So the, the development's not there. So at some point in time, there's going to be more demand than there is supply. And then that's going to force the real growth. And I think we're getting really close to that. But I don't have the demographics or the data. Um, and I don't even think the state of Hawaii... <laughs> I mean, the thing you'll know and learn about the state of Hawaii is you want to talk about a bass ackward organization. I mean, everybody knows it's not the best. Uh, it's, I mean, a lot of people would say, well, you should come to my state. But no, Hawaii is notorious for not being managed correctly. Uh, there's a saying, it's called Hawaii time. I don't really know too much about it, but I hear people always complaining about it's on island time, it's on Hawaii time, the government's jacked up this way this way I mean you hear it everywhere but it's really unorganized over here in a lot of ways but they do sometimes get things done the job market in Kona is pretty good if you're a construction man a builder now would be a good time to consider moving to Hawaii if you're into the tourism sector you can find jobs with various different corporations here Target Walmart uh, Midas, Ace Hardware, you know, they have corporate jobs available here so you can get relocated, especially in the medical field. Um, elderly care is a good career here. Um, yeah, the tourism industry, hospitality is pretty good. If you're looking to start a business here, get ready to put in some serious time. It's not the, if you're looking to tap into the local market, I, I would say for me it's been a process of waiting for the growth to happen but obviously if the growth just starts happening really fast then it just you know then you're right in the fast lane and you're you're just catching it as it's coming but over the last few years it's been slow to, to build but it, it just appears like Kona's getting ready to really just take off and there's gonna be a, a great deal of demand and the supply is going to have to increase. With all that being said, the lifestyle in Kona is second to none. You've got deep sea diving, black water, blue water, coral reefs, you know, swimming with all sorts of uh, marine mammals, dolphins, manta rays, um, tiger sharks if you like, whale sharks, um, Yeah, the coral reefs are obviously still alive in some areas. It's it's a shame to see how the sun how how sunscreen and other chemicals and other pollutants have definitely killed coral. You know. But I'm not going to comment on all that cuz I'm not going to be an extremist environmentalist, but it it is hard to ignore. Deep sea fishing is amazing here. That's why you see a lot of people wearing pelagic. Pelagic means deep water. So anytime you see someone wearing a pelagic something, pelagic magic or uh, pelagic islands, you know, stuff like that, it's because it gets really deep really fast here because the volcanoes are just, just sloping into the ocean. That's why marlin fishing is really popular here because those are pelagic fish. That sells a whale shark technically as a pelagic fish. So a lot of different sea creatures can come up into this area that you might not have seen, especially when you're out there. Like right now we have humpback whales. They're 
giving birth here um, to avoid the orcas because the orcas, you know, eat their young. So up in Alaska, they got a lot of orcas, and so they come down here into a pelagic desert. It's a pelagic desert here. That's why the coral can grow. With there's not what that means is there's not like algae blooms and stuff like that. So the water is see through, and you can see all the way to the to the to the um, ocean floor, which is where the coral grows and uses the photosynthesis from the sun. That's why diving here is so great because the water's clear and so is the um, diving's beautiful. As long as, you know, divers aren't knocking the coral over with their um, tanks. And that's one of the things that's really uh, come into the spotlight alongside the, the, the dolphin tour boats, the manta ray tours, and the uh, diving has all come under the spotlight for its environmental impact that it's had in Kona. For everybody who says empty the tanks in SeaWorld and everything, let them be free, that same crowd then moves over into the, well, hey, don't uh, swim with dolphins in the wild either. <laughs> and then it just kind of, it's you know, once they get one thing, they want more and more and more. And the dolphin industry out here is interesting and here's my take on it okay so it's good they're in they're in the wild it's two is the population is really thriving here I mean anybody who comes around that population you'll see babies all the time there's always babies in the pod and one thing dolphins always love to do is have sex that's one of the behaviors that you'll notice about dolphins so I mention that because it's a healthy population of dolphins so if they're really impacted by the tour boats, you know, you would see it. It would be, but everyone you talk to says the dolphin uh, pods just keep on growing. And here's the here's the real kicker: if the dolphins didn't like it, they would move. The, the boats can only stay so close to Hanukkah Harbor, so it's not that big of a deal. Sure, it's a little bit, you know, they do chase the dolphins a little bit, and it kind of looks a little bit overboard. I get that. But the dolphin tourism industry is pretty cool. I think it's good that they permit only a certain amount of boats so that not all these people are trying to swim with dolphins, but it's a good industry and dolphins are free and wild and the population is healthy. So nothing's perfect, but it's a pretty good industry. Some people are gonna hate that I just said that, but I've swam with the dolphins many times and they appear to be a very healthy population. The manta rays, same thing. They feed on the plankton that is attracted to the lights that man has brought in. Now, the, one, the, the snorkelers aren't so much of an environmental impact. It's the divers. So when the divers are down there, it's dark. They're clanging their, their scuba tanks up against the coral reef. And it got to a point where the, everything that was down there is now dead because of the divers. So I bring all this into the, the question is because that's affecting the quality of life for other people who enjoy that quality of life. You also have hiking trails, you also have surfing, you also have uh, festivals, music, luau's, you know, golfing, beach, just chilling at the beach, Kua Bay, we're talking about the west side of the island, so you got Hapuna, Kua Bay, Kikakai, you know, you got Magic Sands. I'm not trying to blow up these spots so everyone goes there. It's just the more spots you know about, the more we can spread it out because people are going to go to them whether I mention them or not. I mean, it's it's just kind of the way I look at it is spread it out. Don't just go to Kua Bay and, you know, think that it's the only cool spot on the whole island. Don't just go to Hapuna you know, understand there's other cool spots to go. And it's, especially if you're not getting in the ocean, you just want sand. You know, some place is just going to have sand and lava uh, rocks if you get in the ocean. So if you're just looking for sand in a beach and you're not going to get in the water, then you can go to a beach that's not going to... There's tons of beach in between the airport and pine trees, all white sand. You can just hang out there. No one really goes to that. And most of the people, when they go to the beach, believe it or not, they don't even get in the water. So if you're just looking for beach, check out that. I mean, 
between pine trees, which is uh, Kohaniki, all the way up to alongside the airport. So lots of good lifestyle here. The food is okay. The food is okay. I complained about the food in other videos, but yeah. Just Kona in general is really cool. You got Kona Coffee, Kialikakua Bay, which is beautiful. You got Two Step. Um, just lots to do. Lots of uh, exciting, exciting lifestyle uh, hikes, and just so much to do very close around here. I mean, you're you're within close proximity. It's so many different things. You already know about the South Point. You already know about the other side of the island. You already know about the North Side. You know, you just got so many things. When it snows in Mauna Kea, it takes you maybe an hour and a half to get up there from here. If you want to go to Waipio, it's maybe an hour and a half. If you want to go to Polulu, it's an hour and a half. If you want to go to Lava, it's an hour and a half. I mean, from Kona, you're pretty much an hour and a half away from any other place. At the, at, that's the, you know, so you're, <laughs> you're just, it's, a, it's a good quality lifestyle. For everybody that comes in, there's always somebody leaving too. So, you know, I, I wouldn't get too worked up over people coming to the island in the growth because at the same time people are coming in, people are get, leaving and going out. The reason people leave is because after living on an island for a little while and if you're not already established in business and life here and your family's not here, at some point in time you're going to leave. And so that's part of the island too. And then you have people who are real, real locals who've been here all their life. So anyway, go ahead and subscribe to this channel if you like to hear videos about or hear information about Hawaii. And uh, I'll see you guys next time.